Well, hello there. My name is Mark Myers. I love helping trainers, presenters, workshop facilitators, just like you really take your results to the next level. In today's video, I want to talk to you about two things, two questions that you really should stop asking if you're a person that's running a workshop or you're running a training session, so to speak. Now, I'm a big observer, so to speak, of things that happen in life, and I kind of use a metaphor or analogy of, if you're going to put your head in water and your hand gets wet, then you're like, oh, it's wet. And you're like, I don't want my hand to get wet, so probably it's a good idea to stop putting my hand in the water. Right? Seems like a bit of a ridiculous metaphor, but the thing is, what we realize in training and communication is that all communication will create a response. And over time, if you've been training and facilitating and you know running workshops long enough, you start to see things that are very predictable, very predictable. And if you can actually um, see how the predictable consequences that happen when you say particular things and you go, ah, is that response the one that I want or not? Well, you can probably change direction and stop doing that behavior. Now, that was a long-winded explanation. So basically say there's two questions that trainers, facilitators, coaches, mentors, ask their audience when they're delivering content, they get a response that's kind of like, yeah, probably subpar and probably not the response that you want. All right? So let's dive into it. Grab a pen, get ready to write. Because the two things that I'm going to mention, they're common sense, but they're not common practice. And people still do them. And they still wonder, why do they give me the response that I get? Maybe I should change my behavior. Maybe I shouldn't. But I can't be bothered making a change. Right? So number one is asking for volunteers and that sounds like can i get a volunteer from the audience please or can i um does anyone want to volunteer for this activity okay now this is really 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 not a great idea because as soon as you say can i get a volunteer you're going to get instant silence because everyone in the audience is going to go is it me? Is it them? Oh. <laughs> Who's going to put their hand up? I don't want to put my hand up. I don't want to get it wrong. But yeah. And they're going to have an uncomfortable reaction to your, can I get a volunteer? And what we need to realize is that the best way around this is to pick your demo subject as early as possible in the piece. And what, I'm, what do I mean by that? Essentially, in the back of your mind, know that during your workshop, you're going to have to demo some stuff, right? And when you're meeting and greeting people and you're doing your first initial mm, content pieces, so to speak, as you're delivering your workshop, start to notice who are the outgoing people? Who are the people that really want to play along? The people that really want to absorb your information as much as possible? The people that you're going to ask to volunteer. Because if you pick it right, they are the people that are going to relish the opportunity to be up on stage and working with you, all right? Guaranteed that they are going to relish the opportunity. Now, you don't want to pick an introvert. You don't want to pick someone that's a little bit reserved. You also don't want to pick an activist or someone that's a little bit... Um, a bit of a protagonist, so to speak, because you might get them up on stage to try and demo something and they might throw spanners in the works and, you know, undercut your activity or undermine your demo that you're trying to do with your audience, right? So please, please, please stop asking for volunteers because you get instant silence. Better way to handle it is pick your demo subjects beforehand and you say, Tim, could you come and join me on stage and we're just going to work together. I'm going to demo something and everyone would like you to pay attention as I work with Tim up here or, you know, Tom or whoever it may be, but pre-select who you're going to demo your content with, so to speak, right? And if you get this right, it goes magically well. If you get it wrong, yeah, that's great feedback for you to know that maybe you should have worked with that person again and pick someone else, pick someone else. But predetermine who you're going to work with for your demo subjects. One of the best things I've ever learned from my public speaking coach. Next thing, next thing, please, please, please stop asking this question. Now, this question is, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? All right. Instantly, again, another moment of silence. You're going to get silence when you ask that question. There's a number of ways that you can handle that instead. And some of the um, ways that you can handle it are the following. Number one, you can presuppose the question. And you can say something like, at this point, some of the questions I typically get are this, 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 and this, and this. And so let's address those questions right now. And you can actually um, address the typical questions that come up. Next one that you can do, 
Easy. You can actually say to your audience, okay, cool. Based on what I've just shared with you, go ahead and ask me one question that comes to mind as you've heard the content and write it down. And then we're going to hear questions from the audience. So you can actually give them time to think of a question and you can actually give them time to process, create, and they're going to end up creating better quality questions. Now, the other thing that you can do is certainly say, okay, we just covered a bunch of content. And if you do have any questions at all, I'll be around after the segment and you can come up and see me and happy to work through any questions, concerns, or queries that you may have as to how you may be able to apply this particular content in your particular context, all right? But you need to realize as soon as you say, does anyone have any questions? you're going to get instant silence, all right? So it's probably not the best thing to ask. You may want to say, all right, um, what questions do you have or what two questions do you have or what's one question that you have that gives time to write, however you want to play it. But be aware, as soon as you say, does anyone have any questions, you're going to get silence. So my biggest piece of advice to all presenters and trainers, just don't ask the question in that manner. Ask it in a different way and simply say, if someone does have questions, come and see me after the break or come and see me at another time. And the other thing is, if you do throw it out to the floor and say, does anyone have any questions? Typically, what you do find is same way, same people ask the questions all the time. And that's totally cool. And don't be afraid or don't be worried about that because you're going to find there is typical learners that really love to ask quality questions because they like to think outside the box. And that's just a need for them, so to speak. So don't ask, does anyone have any questions? Instead, say, what questions do you have? Or if you do have any questions, come and see me after the break. All right. So on that note, good, good, good. Asking, can I get a volunteer? And still asking, does anyone have any questions? On that note, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get this message out there, folks. Thanks so much for watching and um, following along with this channel. It's a great pleasure and honor, and I love sharing these insights with you. I hope you're getting some value from it. If you are, don't forget to drop a comment in the chat box um, or in the comments box there. Love hearing from you, and thank you so much for following along with this channel. On that note, we'll see you on the next one.